Hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for the 8th part in the What Matters Most series, in which we are finding out which component of a car matters most to its overall one lap speed, by fitting them individually to a Honda NSX on Gran Turismo 4, and then taking them out for a one lap dash around Laguna Seca. In this episode we are looking at the weight, or rather the lack of it, and how that can boost the NSX's lap time, and now this was a policy that Colin Chapman dedicated his entire automotive career to. I mean, all you have to do is just look at the Lotus F1 cars from their older period, like the 60s and 70s, and the policy that Colin Chapman adopted to those F1 cars, and which is why they were race winners so often. And in the last episode, um, we saw the power of the NSX made a 6.7 second jump, a lap, from increasing the power from 281 horsepower to 462 horsepower. And now Colin Chapman, a legendary British engineer, has gone on record to say that adding power makes you faster on the straights, subtracting weight makes you faster everywhere. So let's see if he is right in what he says, and test out what he devoted his cars towards, and whether that was the right policy. So let's have a look on how you can reduce the NSX's weight. Now on Grand Turismo 4 there are three stages of weight reduction that can be done. The first stage removes what the game claims aren't needed to maintain performance, such as the rear seats, upholstery and sound insulation, and that instantly reduces the weight from 1340kg or 1.34 tonnes to 1219kg or 1.219 tonnes. So that is a massive reduction in weight, but there is still more that can be done. Because the second stage replaces the bonnet, boot lid and other body panels that can be replaced with lighter variants made out of aluminium or titanium rather than something heavier like steel. Now this helps to reduce the car's weight further without losing any performance or anything from the car actually, down from 1219kg to 1179kg or 1.179 tonnes. And however, there is still the final stage in the weight reduction, and it is a very drastic one. It replaces yet more body parts with lighter variants, and crucially, it adds a carbon monocoque shell around the car to further reduce weight and add performance from improving the natural characteristics of the car. And now I said this stage is drastic because a carbon monocoque shell is what race cars tend to have. And so this is a big deal and should massively improve the handling of the car just on its own. And aside from that, it also reduces the weight even further from 1,179kg to 1,139kg or 1.139 tonnes. So thanks to all three of these weight reduction stages, we've reduced the total weight of the car from 1.34 tonnes to 1.14 tonnes. So that is a 0.2 ton or 200 kilograms improvement and should massively help the NSX's straight line speed and handling. In our last episode we were able to add 181 horsepower to the standard NSX to have a total horsepower of 462 and a horsepower per ton ratio of 344 horsepower per ton. And now here we have reduced the weight of the car to 1.14 tons but kept the power at the standard 281 and that means that this new lightened car has a power to rate ratio of 246 horsepower per ton and that's not as vast as the heightened horsepower cars power to rate ratio but it's still an improvement from the standard cars 209 horsepower to rate ratio however to achieve the same power to rate ratio as the car in the last episode the car have to weigh only 0.815 tons, so it is clearly that the reduced weight is unlikely to have as big of an impact as the NSX in the last episode which had an uprated power, but this is just due to the nature of the game and how it's run and what you can do within it, but do keep in mind that this NSX does not have the power to weight ratio anywhere near that of the NSX in the last episode, so should naturally be slower. But however, as Colin Chapman also said, Less weight improves everything, more power only helps in straight lines. So the reduced weight may be closer to the powered up NSX's lap time as seen in the previous episode than we may expect despite the drastic reduction in horsepower per ton. And now all these figures being chucked around I know it's confusing but 
I'll make sure I put all of these figures for you to read yourself down in the description to this video, just to avoid confusion. Anyway, so first, before we go to Laguna Seca, let's head back to Las Vegas Drag Strip to see how it compares to both the standard NSX and the powered up NSX as we saw in the last episode across the 400 meters. Now the standard car crossed the line at 103 miles an hour and with a time of 13.813 seconds. The powered up NSX with its much higher power to weight ratio than this lightened NSX crossed the line at 121 miles an hour and did the 400 meters in 13.162 seconds. So now onto the lightened NSX. And despite its lower power to weight ratio than the powered up NSX, it is a very comparable 107 miles an hour end speed and a time of 13.32 seconds, only two tenths slower than the powered up NSX despite its much less power to weight ratio and crossing the line at a much slower speed. Now this is due to how the car is lighter and now because it's lighter it has a better tendency to get off the line and less wheel spin and so basically it's going to have a much better launch than both the standard and powered up NSX which had more weight and in the powered up NSX's case more power which meant it was harder to get the car off the line and with the powered up NSX had more wheel spin off the line which obviously is going to increase the time taken to do the 400 meters. So now we've done the 400 meter drag race, let's head on to the real meat of this series with the one lap around Laguna Seca. And now just as a reminder, the standard NSX did the lap in 1 minute 39.7 seconds and the powered up NSX did the lap in 1 minute 33.3 seconds with its power to weight ratio of 344 horsepower per tonne. So now onto the lightened NSX which is actually the real focus for this episode and with a much lower power to weight ratio of only 246 horsepower per tonne than the powered up NSX's horsepower per tonne ratio with 344 but that 246 is still an improvement on the standard car's 209 per tonne ratio. But even though the horsepower of the car didn't improve because the car was lighter, it actually felt so much nicer to drive. And now this is obviously because it's lighter and so it had better handling, acceleration, drivability. And obviously if this was an endurance race, it would have better tyre durability and better fuel economy. And overall the car has better braking. So while it didn't actually feel much faster, because it improved pretty much every aspect of the car's performance, rather than the powered up NSX which only approved is straight line performance. Much like Colin Chapman said, as I previously mentioned, the light in NSX did make a surprisingly big difference. So because of all of this and because of how the Lightning NSX was able to just generally improve the car, it actually completed a lap of Laguna Seca in 1 minute 37.8. Now that's 1.9 seconds quicker than the standard car, and while it is 4.5 seconds slower than the powered up NSX, that is obviously due to the much less power to weight ratio which is just down to, to how the game works, and obviously if both cars had an equal power to weight ratio, I seriously reckon that the lighter car would have been quicker than the powered up car. But despite that, as it turns out, Enzo Ferrari's persistence on maximum power was much more efficient than Colin Chapman's policy of adding lightness, although as I said, this test was biased towards the powered up car, and you can't really definitively say that, but just from this alone, Enzo Ferrari seems to be right in what he's saying here, that power was more important than Colin Chapman's persistence on lightness. But as I say, this isn't really a fair test, but it's all we can really do in Grand Turismo 4, and so while we have raised the battle of these two technical giants, 
we're going to have to put it to bed as it hasn't been solved just yet and I may bring it back up later on for another separate video so be sure to let me know guys down in the comments if you want that video because while this hasn't been conclusive it has definitely raised the issue again because the lighting car was very close in the 400 meter dash but not so close around a track situation so if you want me to bring this situation up again be sure to let me know in the comments. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the 8th part of the What Matters Most series in which we saw the effectiveness of lightening a car and how it affects its performance, a policy which Colin Chapman lived and died by in his F1 career as a designer and engineer for the Lotus F1 cars. And now I've said this a million times but obviously the game doesn't actually allow for a fair comparison of maximum power and minimum weight to have an equal power to rate ratio in this game but as I say be sure to let me know down in the comments if you want me to bring this up because Enzo Ferrari always insisted on maximum power Colin Chapman always insisted on minimum weight and I think this is a battle we actually finally need to put to bed here anyway in the next part we'll see the second to last part in this What Matters Most series where we will go over the final components of the car and the final component of the NSX's one lap performance and how much of an effect that can have and now that is the suspension on the car so how much can a sophisticated and effectively tuned suspension add to the NSX's one lap pace and if you want to know be sure to tune into the next episode which should be out around a week from now so I'll see you guys then